airborne tanks. This tank is the M8 armored gun system, also known as the Buford. This is a real tank design, capable of being dropped by a parachute system from a transport aircraft. Paradropping and gliding tanks into battlefields is not just a Hollywood or anime creation. This was actually done in combat during World War II. The Western Allies used the M22 Locust, a purpose-built airborne light tank, which could be transported by glider right into action, looking like something straight out of Thunderbirds. Eight hundred and thirty M twenty twos were built during World War II, with two hundred and sixty shipped to Great Britain from America. There were serious design and performance issues with the tank. They were very lightly armored to be airworthy, and they were undergunned. They further had mechanical reliability issues. But despite this, they amazingly did see combat. Eight were dropped by glider during Operation Varsity in March of 1945. Several of the tanks were damaged during landing, and one was knocked out by a German self-propelled gun. Two, however, did make it into action, but they were said to have provided little value and attracted German artillery fire while exposing friendly infantry positions. But this was not the end of airborne armored vehicles. The most famous, the M551 Sheridan, entered service in 1967. It was used in the Vietnam War up until the Gulf War in the early 1990s. This was a far more advanced armored fighting vehicle. It could be landed by parachute and could also swim across rivers. It was armed with a 152mm gun that could fire conventional ammunition and shillelagh guided anti tank missiles. Fire! On the way! Just over 1,600 of these vehicles were built, but like the M22, they may have been too ambitious in design. They had poor survivability and poor reliability. One candidate to replace the Sheridan was the M8 armored gun system, the tank shown in the A-Team. This was actually considered a good light tank design, also capable of landing by parachute, but it was dropped due to funding issues. Tanks like the Sheridan and M8 are designed to be dropped at altitude and also using LAPES, Low Altitude Parachute Extraction System. Aircraft using this method can drop their cargo extremely low to the ground, at around 2 meters. It's at this height that a drogue chute drags the cargo, or tank, out of the cargo hold. The shock to the tank hitting the ground is partially absorbed by a special pallet. The crew does not drop with the tank and will either be waiting for it, or drop after the tank hits the ground, attempting to drop as close to it as possible and props to Grills and Panzer for animating a good approximation using the LAPES method, though this would be done with one tank at a time. Low altitude drops are accurate and kept cargo and aircraft safer from enemy fire than landing and unloading. However, two C-130s crashed in the 1980s performing such maneuvers. The extreme low-flying maneuver coupled with drastic changes to an aircraft's weight and center of gravity leave no margin for pilot error. Today it's most common to see lighter vehicles, commonly Humvees and even boats, pair dropped at low velocity from American aircraft. Other nations have designed airborne vehicles. The Soviet Union during World War II attempted a glider tank, the Antonov A-40, which proved too heavy for safe towing. Decades later, the Soviets were far more successful pair dropping their light BMD combat vehicles. They used a rocket system to soften the vehicle's landing. To date, it's hard to say the future of airborne tanks, likely smaller armored vehicles, will continue to dominate this tactic, as deadly weapon systems become increasingly available in smaller packages. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for, I don't know, what's our pun today? Dropping in? Leave a better pun in the comment section, and we'll see you next time.